check it out inside of the trunk inside of the wheel well inside of the wheel well both of them used to be dented and dinged in the mess got those straightened out got the trunk lid straightened out got all of that that welded seam got that, that all taken care of on restoring christine this weekend we worked inside of the trunk a lot of stuff that nobody sees but with some body filler some sanding a lot of hand elbow grease a lot of patience we sprayed some primer it looks beautiful so if you're interested in seeing how we got this done this week stay tuned to restoring Christine. We're continuing working our 56 Bel Air this weekend. Last weekend I published episode 77 and actually truth be told so that that episode was on uh, fairing out the top of this trunk lid and it came out great uh, but since I had talked my way through bodywork so many times before filler and and uh, uh, sanding and, and whatnot I decided you know what let me just do it like a music video let me just put the camera on hyperlapse film myself working, get this thing straightened out and just put some good rock and roll music on in the background. And I thought that video came out great. However, the YouTube algorithm or something didn't. <laughs> so when it came out on Wednesday, uh, it just fell flat on its face. And that's a beautiful episode. I'm really proud of it. Episode 77, that was last week's work. I'd really appreciate it to give it a second chance or a first chance and go back and take a look at it. But we're gonna continue with the trunk this week, but we're gonna go from the outside to the inside. So let me show you what we're gonna do now. Okay, so I had, ep I had episodes 31 and 32 regarding this trunk pan. Episode 31 is a review, it's an unboxing video of this trunk pan. And then episode 32, the one that follows right behind it is when we actually installed it in the car. But then much later on, episode 61, I have, I think I called it something like, no more drunk in the trunk. <laughs> so I had rust that was at the top on both sides of the trunk near the hinges. Um, and what I did was I created a new, I had to fabricate a new trunk bracket. I had to mimic that. That's the factory bracket over there. And there's the new one that I had to make from scratch. I had to repair the wheel well and get that all welded in, but that all came out great. And I have some patching up here that I did where the rust was up in the top. And what I said in those videos, or actually, what I said in episode 61 was that you're going to think I'm a nut, but I'm going to climb in this trunk and I'm going to do some body work with body filler. And that's what this episode is going to be. I'm going to finally get out here and start taking care of the interior of the trunk. Uh, it's only shown, you know, it's rarely shown, but I mean, that's what really makes the difference between a car that you really you really appreciate is when you suddenly start looking around all the nooks and crannies and you start seeing those like, oh well it's straight and tight and clean well that's what we want for christine we want it straight tight and clean so that's what i'm going to do this weekend so i'm going to get the trunk lid off I'll show you a quick trick about that not an original idea stole it from another youtuber don't know who it was wish i'd give you credit if i if i knew who you were but it said drill a hole in the the two hinges Self-trapping screw, self-tapping screw, and that basically locks the alignment. I can go ahead and break those four half-inch bolts, take the trunk lid off, and when I do take the trunk lid off, I can go ahead and do all the work that is to repair or to, to fair out and smooth out the interior of the trunk lid. And that was in another video. I'll show you that one later on. That's what we're going to do this week. So here we go. All right, so if, uh, if you're watching, if you're keeping up, a few episodes back I had trouble with, uh, I was doing body fill on the back of the trunk and I ran out of this Impact Acid Etch Primer and I started using a Rust-Oleum product and it didn't, it didn't play nicely with everything. So I went back to the Impact. This is designed to do exactly what we needed to do, an Acid Etch Primer to help convert bare metal that ha might have a little bit of rust on it and uh, brace it for Impact, haha. -ha. <laughs> But on the back, it shows you that uh, you, you, you can spray it, and then uh, it's 10 minutes between coats on the primer, and then one hour to top coat. So if it's one hour to top coat, then it's one hour to body fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the metal with my palm sander and my DA. i got 100 grit, and I'm going to sand a little bit of the, the things that are still bare. I'll go ahead and get that done, and then uh, we'll hit it with the primer, let it sit. 
what I'll do is I'll go over there and work on the trunk lid in the meantime. Um, but that's we're gonna, how we're going to start off. All right, now that I sanded and primed it, I think you get an idea of why I want to do body filler in here. Now you can see it. You know, that was a, a strip that had to be fabricated, that whole thing, in order to put this, uh, that's the wheel well, that had to be patched in order to put this trunk lid in. That was all, not trunk lid, trunk pan. And that was all badly damaged with corrosion. So I faked the bead in it. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this primer set. But you can see I need to smooth all that out because all this can be painted nicely when it's done. And then over there, similarly, that's not nearly as bad. I didn't have to patch it as badly as that other side. The driver's side was much worse than this passenger side. So I had just the, I welded right in a bead. So it didn't warp that much. So now we're going to let that cure and set for an hour. And uh, let's go ahead and start working on the trunk lid itself. All right, back in episode 25, I cut out a section of the, the trunk shell and also the outer skin and I replaced all that. So more or less the, the, the inside four inches and the outside maybe six inches or so are all brand new uh, and have been replaced. So when I did this, um, I, I got the well looking as smooth as I possibly could at the time, but it's just, a, it needs a little bit of fairing so that's what I'm going to do on this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll take my, my DA again. I'm going to sand this down again. I'll hit it with the acid etch primer. And I'll get this ready to go ahead and, and bear and smooth all of this out. So that's what I'm going to do next. I got that done one thing I did that was off camera is I took my flap disc and my my grinder and I went ahead and I touched up this edge because when I built this edge up it was all welded along this this far edge and that was all grinded down to make this shape so the well bead uh, was was a little bit proud was sticking up a little bit so I just grinded that down a little bit because I am going to take my time and I'm going to fair all that edge out and make that look smooth so that when you grab it because this is going to be something that people will, will touch you know raising and lowering the, the trunk lid so I'm going to smooth that out too but now I need to hit it with primer and then we can go back into the trunk and start laying down some body filler so I put a straight edge on this and it's got a pretty good dent right there pretty good dent right here I could slap that with filler, but I have a Harbor Freight stud welder, so I'm going to use that to pull that out a little bit and help my cause. So I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, so I'm using just a little small little two millimeter studs. I'm going to have to scuff that up so that the, the welder is able to make contact and do that, but I'm going to set this up and go ahead and get that done. Couple of couple of little side notes. I was using my Steco stud leveler. I got to thank one of my subscribers for recommending that tool. It's only about thirty bucks. It pulls in these studs pretty good. A couple of them you can see I uh, overwhelmed. Camera will focus on it. There you go. I overwhelmed the stud tip. But um, somebody else recommended and said, hey, you know, if you uh, if you use a snip, you can reuse the studs. And that's what the stud looks like when it comes off. And here's a new one. Notice a little head? Well, the little head fits on the ferrule of the gun. So if you don't have the head, the stud really is pretty much useless. So I don't get in the habit of saving these because uh, they end up coming out like this. All right, so now that's done. That's a lot better. Maybe a little high spot I might need to dent in, but um, that's good to go. So let's go ahead and start mixing up some body filler and get, get rolling on this.
All right, let's see how this is gonna sand out with the, uh, with the board. I have a feeling it's gonna fight me. All right, wasn't too bad. I mean, you know, this is a curvy surface and I don't mind if it's got a little bit of a wave in it, but like right now, you know, there's that high spot. I knew I had that. Um, but I'm going to put a little bit more up in here, a little bit more up in here, and that's going to be it. You know, I, I'll, then I'm, I'm going to just be able to detail and do the edges. So I've got to get in here and hand sand this, but this is a big old chunk that I need to do. So I need to get on that before it gets too hard. And there's no way to video that, so forgive me. I'm just going to go ahead and hand sand that off camera. Uh, i got to come back and do that side too. So, whew, we're on it. All right, after sanding it with the board sander with 40 grit on it and then by hand with 80 grit folded on it, onto itself, that's all looking really good. One pass, one pass only so far. So I think a second pass and that'll get it. I'm okay with waviness. I'm just, I just didn't want, you know, creases. I didn't want creases and dents. It might take a third pass up, up here because that's, that's really deep, but we'll see. So I'm gonna mix up some more filler, get these two done, and then, Hopefully, I'll be able to turn my attention to the trunk lid. All right, that's a second pass. It's looking really good. That floated a lot smoother than the first one. I'm starting to shape up the little the bead around the perimeter. So I'm going to let that harden while I'm doing that. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and start working on this trunk lid. So I'm going to mix up some filler. I'm going to put some along this seam and try to get that smoothed out. So instead of hyperlapping, hyper, instead of hyperlapsing this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it in real time. Talk a little bit. I don't know if you guys want to hear my voice, don't want to hear my voice, don't care, one way or the other. I don't know. Um, this project is coming along. Um, I. It is now the end of March, and I am aiming for an October completion. I don't know if I'll get there, but I'm really, I'm really trying to get this thing ready for cruising the coast, which is a, an all week long, two weekends, crescendoing on the second weekend. Um, and it's the first week of October, and it is the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It's an event I've been going to since 2007. I think it's, this is gonna be his 26th year. And I've been bringing the Cutlass the last few years, but from 2007 to 2016, Christine was the car of choice. Christine was the car that I always brought up there. And then when I finished my 71 convertible Cutlass, which I built between 2013 and 2016, I finished that car before Christine was rolled into mothballs. And I knew it needed some attention, I knew she needed some attention, and that's what led to this. So if you haven't seen it, you know, it's an old video, it's number one, it's first one, it's where I really get in my soapbox, and I explain who I am, why I am, why Christine, where did, you know, how did I come across the car, how did I come to be a car guy, I tell stories about my dad, I tell stories about hot riding Chevelles in high school, about my dad and I restoring Chevelles um, in high school and beyond. And my days reading racing street stocks. Um, you know, so that, that episode one, I just sat in front of the camera and monologued and just told the story. And I had no idea where this channel was gonna go. Not, uh, not the slightest clue. I just knew I was gonna give it a shot do a YouTube channel, see if anybody cared to pay attention, and at the moment, I think I got a little over 1,600 subscribers, I think, I don't know, I don't do it, um, I don't the money, I don't do it to, to make this channel, like, blow up and be a second job, but, um, 
you know, I do it, I'm doing this to document the build, I'm doing this for, to leave something in legacy for my kids. I have three kids, I have a daughter who's 26 at, the, at this moment. I have two sons, one that's 24, another one that is uh, 21. The 21 year old is about to graduate from college this semester. The other two have already graduated from college. That in itself is a, a, an achievement. Um, those kids grew up in this car. And I am doing this to preserve the legacy. I love this car. I really do. I love driving it. It's a manual. It's a hot rod. It's stinky. It makes noise. It's, it's um, you know, this is a labor of love because I love this car. I've had her since I'm from New Orleans, so everything is relative to Katrina. I've had her since two months before Katrina. And uh, we've never been apart. You know, she's been a great car. She just needs a little TLC right now, and I'm just seeing to it that she gets it. All right, we're going to let that harden. I might tinkle it a little bit, but um, while this is hardening, we're going to go work on the pump. That's really close. Really close. Whew. Nothing but elbow grease on that one. I got a few little, few little things on the edges. I can see from the other side. You can't see them when you're over here, but you can see them from from your angle. Um, I'm almost done. Um, yeah, I think a couple little, little teeny tiny little things, like a little. A little divot right here, a little divot right here. It's small. You know, I was standing this by hand without a block. It doesn't matter. All of this pressed metal, you know, it's like going to be warped and wavy and dimples. So, you know, just as long as the big stuff doesn't doesn't stick out. So, I think it looks, it's looking good. I think so. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to probably throw down a little bit of primer so I can see what I've got going on both in the trunk and on this lid. And then uh, once we do that, probably call it a day for this one. And then I'll have to take my time. You know, it's like like anything else, you, you need to sneak up on it. So I've been working on this. Just This is just detail work. And this is what I'm, I was talking about when I was doing all the fill, when I was doing all the fill on the, on the body. And I was saying that this is 95%. Well, this is what I'm talking about. You know, this is gonna be the little 1% is doing all this little detail, detail work, all little edges, all little, the little nicks, the little scratches, the little scuffs. So I've still gotta do that around the whole car. Uh, so let me go ahead and dust this off, dust that off, make some primer, shoot it, you know, let's get this real quick.
I have wonder. <laughs> I just finished cleaning my gun. And um, these are Eastwood Concourse Series guns. And this is the gun I was spraying with uh, the last couple of weeks. That's my regular gun. I don't have a primer gun. I should. But um, <laughs> I didn't change the tip on the detail gun. I used my detail gun because I wanted a small pot. I wanted to be able to get in the corners and I didn't change the tip and it was a 1.0 and I should have been using something like a 1.3 tip. So it was like struggling to get material out of it. But <laughs> we got it done. So uh, let, me, let me show you what it looks like. Trunk lid looks terrific. I get up close to it and there's a couple little bitty flaws fix that a little bit right here you know but look at the seam so that's a welded seam that's a brand new lip you know look at that remember I was putting filler on it look how that came out real nice and clean all the way around and the weld down here where it was patched the weld is somewhere like right right here gone 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 so let's go see the two wheel wells. They're similar. They have a couple of little flaws. Oh, it's dark in here. Ooh, I'm running out of daylight. But this, you know, this had a patch right here, and now you can't see it. There's a little bit of detailing I need to do, like right around, around in this, and I'll, I'll take care of that. On this side, similarly, I got a little bit of detail to do up in here, but it looks really good. I mean, this is the one that looked horrible, remember? And now it's pretty flat. It's not perfectly flat. You know, it's got a hump. But, you know, compared to before, it was like, it was dimpled and divity. And here's another reason why I'm not going to get this trunk, you know, spotless. Because look, there's the factory spot welds that are coming through from the other side. And I have those. I don't want to lose those. But, that's going to do it. Whew. All right. Then it's been a full day um, getting this done. Appreciate you sticking with me. Um, you know, we're getting there. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week, uh, what I'm going to work on, but I'll figure something out. But anyway, do appreciate everybody watching my channel. If you're liking the videos, please give them a thumbs up. And if you're enjoying the channel, please consider subscribing. Be, I'd be very thankful. So that's going to do it for this episode. Until I see you next time, take care of yourself. Cheers. Deuce! What? Deuce! Oh, what? Deuce! Come see. Ray. Deuce. Who's hungry? Is Deuce hungry? Oh, yeah, he's hungry. Let's go. <laughs> I'll see you.